You are watching and listening to Chris and Lester Till I Die TV on YouTube and your favourite podcasts. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Now be sure to watch Chris and Lester Till I Die TV by subscribing on YouTube and following them on social media for all the latest Leicester City news and information. Come on, you foxes! <laughs> Than that. You're watching Lester Till I Die TV. Watch us on YouTube. Listen on your favorite podcast platform. Or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow, and join in now. Right, Chris. Oh, what there? Oh, what right at the back? How the devil are we all? Yes, it's the weekly prediction show on Leicester Till I Die TV. Welcome along. And this is where you can watch us live or listen to us post-show. Watch us on YouTube. Listen on your favourite podcast platform. Or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow and join in now. It is. It's the Prediction Show. Good evening. We are on Facebook, Twitter and I say YouTube. Lester Till I Die TV, please give us a subscribe or listen on your favourite podcast platform if you are listening back to this. Um, the week before the international break, we've got Russia coming up on Thursday in the form of Spartak Moscow. The Russians are coming to town. Be careful what knobs you hold. That doesn't sound right, does it? Doorknobs you hold, benches you sit on. Just be very, very careful. Um, but... Before the international break, we've still got some decent football this weekend. We entertain Leeds. That's not going to be easy, but then it appears nothing is easy this weekend. Uh, but one thing that does seem to be easy is our Brad doing well in this competition, which is a very, very annoying. Good evening, Brad. <laughs> evening, Chris. It's uh, more by luck than, than knowledge, isn't it, mate? Because uh, it's definitely going south in the long ball, but I'm happy to be top of this one, mate. This one's the real one. That that other one's just a pretty stupid <laughs> tournament. Do you know, so I, I'm thinking the other way. I was thinking, like, the other one's the real one, and this one's just a bit of fun. But um, I've, got to, I've, got, I've got to do something this week. And, you know, you, last week I agreed with you, with sort of, I think, on all but one game. And I was wrong on that one game. But I can't agree with you because I don't get any more points than you. But... Um, but you, you got to start being brave with your Norwiches, mate. Your Norwiches I am. Yes. Yes. and your uh, yes. And you've... Watford's, I guess. That's the only one. Uh, not, not mine. Yes. Yeah, not, no, I'm not, not like you. I'm not as brave as you, Mr. North Macedonia. But uh, oh, well. you're, Come on, you're hiding your beauty there in, in the, behind the screen. You're not well, I'm afraid. So we're lucky to have you. So thank you very much for, for popping on. A bit of the old man flu, is it? Yeah, the, the stomach's not been really too pleasant today either. So I don't want people thinking they're getting a tour around the house and all of a sudden it's because I'm uh, trying to sort myself out a little bit. Cause well, as long, as long as we don't want to see you sat on the toilet, that, that's to be honest. But, uh, yeah, you know. I thought I'd say it's a view of that experience. Yes, and me, thank you very much. Um, but to be honest with you, some people go, well, as you know, every week up until this point, we've been having a, a guest, and it's usually a guest from another football team. But I'm pleased to say that we're going to have a new permanent guest on the show. He's been with us before. Uh, we've missed having him, but with the timing of the shows and what have you, it's not worked out. So this is going to be much better. Other people have said that have brought him in because he's not very good at predicting, and and I'm very really close to the bottom. <laughs> Help me improve. I I wouldn't do that. Steve Lynix, good evening, sir. How the devil are you? 
<laughs> I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> that, I mean, I, that has been uh, sort of accused on me as to why I've brought you in, but I have to be honest with you, it isn't, sir. It isn't at all. I'm sure you'll, you'll give me a run for my money. But uh, we've missed you. Welcome back. Thanks very much. I've missed, uh, missed doing it. Yes, it's been a while. Uh, what do you think of Leicester's uh, season so far? Not uh, not as good as the last two, but, you know, could be, are, are we expecting a bit too much doing it every season? Oh, I think so. Um, you know, we've, we've been fortunate to have a few good seasons uh, prior. But yes. I think uh, things are starting to level out a bit now. Um, I still think the manager's making a few mistakes by a few changes and making a team weaker and trying to play to nullify the opposition. But we'll, we'll see how he goes. He's paid the big bucks and, you know, I just sit in the chair and what. He does. Um, and he pays the big bucks in his hair. It's a bit, obviously, the big bucks isn't working for Newcastle with um, um, Unai Emery turning them down. So we might we might yet see Eddie Howe turn up. But... Um, but like I say, it is the prediction show, so um, we do have a bit of fun. The only good thing about the prediction show, Steve, is that we don't have North Macedonia. So um, <laughs> we're a bit safe there, aren't we, Brad, with your North Macedonia predictions? Yeah, there's no North Macedonia, there's no Greece, there's no um, Czech Republic to shout out to. So uh, you say, there is an origin there, but I've, I've already burnt myself and got away with it, so I'm not going to go near the fire again at Norwich. Was it, was it no, a win not, not you predicted for Norwich, win. Brad? You what? Was it a win you predicted for Norwich? Yeah, and thankfully, Brighton were that awful. They got a draw, so no one got any points on that. So I, I, <laughs> I got away with it. I tested myself. I put the arm over the flame and looked at it in Birmingham, but I won't be doing that again. <laughs> Derby County 2.0. Just having a quick look here, um, Norwich are away to Brentford. So... Give you a chance, third game, to see if you are, are brave enough this week, Brad. Brave enough. So, um, so Steve, you you get a point basically for getting it right. I, I like to keep my quizzes simple because that's I'm simple, so it's easy for me to keep up. But we're both on thirty-eight, you and me. Uh, but Brad is um, uh, wheeling away with a with a big massive forty-three. So we're, we're going to we're going to wheel him in this week, Steve. Um, oh, the way my predictions have been going at the last few uh, months, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I can say far a bit for me, far a bit for me to say. Um, Facebook, I didn't know I'd reach the magic safety mark of 40 points. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you are safe. Uh, Facebook user says he's just going to the King Power now. Um, the game's tomorrow. And <laughs> they're obviously not going for the game because it's a bit late. So, Facebook user, not sure who you are, but tell us why are you going to the King Power? There is, is there must be something on, I'm guessing. Um, it says, but anyway, let's get back to the um, to the long ball, Brad. We should mention the long ball, I think. Um, in the Leicester Till I Die League. I mean, Ian Marshall, sorry, Steve, but Ian Marshall is, is wiping the floor with the rest of us. Um, but you, I think, Brad, you owe a big a big uh, thank you to Cullen Fox because he's keeping you off the bottom. Yeah, it's always nice when Norris get in the in, in the thing to, for moral support because I'm having a torrid time on there. Uh, the one time I'll probably back my own predictions from this because I'm doing well in it. And, of course, Man City have them there and everybody else has them there, don't they? It was pretty <laughs> Wasn't wasn't the best. Wasn't the best. I got se someone. I've got seven points. Actually, I was very surprised last week because we, it started off very bad. Um, and oh. as you will see, as you will see from here, not many of us got the correct answer. Um, although you did get your point there, and I haven't coloured it in yet, but you did get your point there for uh, for picking wolves, Brad. Oh, see that. See the one time you you went against me, Chris, and that's why I'm ahead. That's why I'm ahead. Well, I think with five points, yes, probably more than that. But the first game coming up, it's a Friday night, uh, live on Sky. Um, for you here, Steve, and we'll come to you first. We've got Southampton. We're having a bit of a torrid time of it this season. They're sat in fourteenth at the moment, but they have managed to put a couple of wins together in the last five. They beat Watford. Uh, last week and a couple of weeks ago, they beat Leeds. 
of course, we've got. But not had the best of starts. They've only won sort of the two games, but they've got 11 points. And Villa, um, and they seem to start off very well, but have kind of dropped away. And they're actually a place behind them with 10 points, with four losses, including Tottenham, um, Wolves in that last minute, Arsenal and um, West Ham in their last, say, five games. They've lost four. Which way do you see this going, Steve? I think it's going the same way um, as the last results with Villa. I think uh, Southampton is going to win this one. Right. Um, purely on defence for Aston Villa. It, it, it seems to be all over the place at the moment. It does. Uh, 19 they've conceded. Um, there's not, I think there's only actually Newcastle and Norwich who have conceded more. Um so no, yeah, the defence has got a lot to uh, to be uh, questioned about. So you're going. Oh, let me just do this. You're going for a Southampton win. Southampton win, yeah. The Southampton win for you, right? Let's just see. Um, you could almost believe that this was this was uh, organised, wouldn't you, <laughs> Steve? There. Uh, uh, so, oh, let's have a look. Capitals on, and we'll go for Steve. Right, Brad, how do you see this one going? This is a horrible game. Aston Villa are really not enjoying life at the moment. Their spending spree off the track, Grealish money, looks good on paper, but it's just not clicking. Two seconds, let me put this phone call down. <laughs> I thought that was Steve's drill going off then. Am I right? <laughs> um, yeah. Southampton, they just seem like now they're feeling the effects of losing three or four key players to their to their squad. Their, their, their results, are, they, they seem to be struggling to find the goals enough to get the results. And Villa have been very drab. They've been beaten comprehensively um, the last two or three games, to my knowledge. Um, but this all really depends on which Southampton turns up. And because mm -hmm. Southampton are at home, I am going to agree with Steve and give the edge to Southampton in this game. But it could easily be a draw. Um, but I am going for a Southampton win because they're at home. Thank God for that, because you are going different to me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to agree with Jeff. Good evening, Jeff. How the devil are you? I know it says minor, but it is Jeff. Uh, he's gone 1-1. One, one. Will not be too exciting. I don't think it will be. Um, he, he does say, I think this is a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Um, good morning, Chris Baden, Steve. And he's in the Philippines. Hi there, mate. I hope you're staying safe. Look forward to your predictions. Will they be as good as last week? <laughs> no, which is why we brought Steve in. <laughs> because we know he'll bring a lot, a lot to it. Um, so I don't, I don't we need to improve from last week. I think that was our worst week since we started. To me, I, I've got to agree, and I think he's got draw written all over it. And I know I've got to go different to, to Brad to try and catch him up here, but um no, I I, I just think it depends, obviously, it always depends which, which team turns up for, 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 you know, we know that we've been Leicester fans, don't we? But I just, I can just see it being a drab nil-nil, which probably means it's going to be sort of like 4-3. So I'm going to go for the uh, for the draw between the two there. Second game, I agree, and agree with Jeff. Second game up, it's the big one of the weekend, really. And it's an early kickoff on, uh, on Sky with um, the Manchester Derby. Uh, Ollie's at the wheel, Steve, but exactly where's he taking them? I think this one, I think United are going to win this one. Um, purely because the way um, they've been getting the stick over the last uh, three or four games. Man City don't seem to be firing all, on all cylinders at the moment. So I think um, there might be a bit of fire in the belly for Man United on there. Uh, on this one, and I fancy him to win it, I think, about 2-0. Right. I mean, they did lose to Palace last time out, Manchester City. Um, it, 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 I've never known a season like this for weird results, you know, but, I mean, Man United 
did Tottenham last last week. Um, I mean, that was her a horrendous display, wasn't it, Steve, from Tottenham? I mean, you know, a team like Tottenham, with the number one England striker playing for them, they didn't have another shot on goal. It was, it was embarrassing. Um, I mean, do you think... Ollie's gonna gonna last. I mean, Nuno's gone at Spurs. Um, it probably kept Ollie's job for a little bit longer. But is he gonna last the season? Do you think, Steve? I think he will, and uh, I think to be honest, that he'll get stronger. Um, I think what he needs to do is uh, stamp his authority. Um, mm. I think it's a, a lot like the Tottenham scenario because deep down, I feel that the um, the Tottenham players didn't want to play for Nuno. And then mm. they got him the sack. Um, I think there's three or four in the Man United team that are on the same par as the Tottenham players, but they're not going to come out and say it. And I think if he, you know, if he puts his stamps his authority and leaves the players out that he should leave out, I think um, it'll be a it'll, it'll be a better club. Brad, uh, can he stamp his authority on these players? Is it a case of the players? Being bigger than the manager? Uh, well, Ollie. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry, well, he, sorry, I, 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 sorry, my fault. Yeah, uh, yeah. Man, yeah, with Manchester United. I mean, he can do. He's showing that he can do it. And you, you would think, especially um, Sky's poster boy and Varane, wouldn't have joined Manchester United mm -hmm. if they weren't going to respect Holly enough to take on board and listen to what he's saying. Um, I know they're serial winners and, you know, people might say things about Ronaldo's personality, but I, you just don't join a club like Manchester United, no matter how much love you have for them in Ronaldo's case, if you don't have the trust in the manager that's in charge. You know, Ronaldo's the sort of person that I'm not saying he ever would, but he could go to, he could have gone to the board when they contacted him and gone, I will join Manchester United, but Oli is not being my manager. I do not trust him to manage you. So, yeah, I think he can do it. Uh, I listened to the game last night, though, and Atlanta were very unlucky, very unlucky, uh, you know, Ronaldo bailed Manchester United out again. Varane, who I found out through Sky Sports, is out for a month. And that's big for them. You know, we say Johnny Evans is big for us. Well, it's clear if you look at their results. You know, you know them classic with and withouts that Sky and BT normally bring up when they're looking at an individual player. I think if you looked at Man U with Varane and without Varane, they're just as bad defensively as us. So, this one's interesting because Manchester United have suddenly won a game. Um, they're suddenly feeling a bit fortunate, but they're happy that they're picking up the form. And Man City have just played their bogey team and lost again, which was Crystal Palace. It's, this, this literally is one where I wouldn't be surprised by any result. Because right. Man United have a decent record against Man City. Not surprised, but what are you going for? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go. I, you know what? I've been trying to pick all night. I'm still trying to think now. Man City. I can't pick. I honestly, I can't. This is so difficult. But I don't want to go for a draw. So Man City. Man oh, Brad, don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be going different to me to give me a chance to catch you up. Um, I, 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 my, my, I think my, I think Jeff's going to pick my predictions for me because I'm agreeing with him and he might actually do better than me. But uh, I unfortunately agree with you there. I, I get what Steve's saying, but I think Manchester City are going to be up for this. Um, and I think they know the damage they can if, inflict if they do win. Um, but it is a... It is a Manchester derby. I was I was toying with the idea of a draw, but I just don't think either of these sides would settle for that. So I'm going to go for the Manchester City win as well. Um, we're going to say good evening to Terry. And Terry, now I wouldn't trust Terry Steve with any of his predictions because he put his banker on Leicester beating Arsenal. 
So he's um <laughs> Terry, stick with the dogs, mate. Stick with the dogs. <laughs> right. Um now then we've got Brad's favorite team here, uh Steve. Brentford doing brilliantly. They, I did predict that they would be the best of the three teams that uh, came up. And so far, they are proving me right. But they've slipped down a little bit uh, with, with um, three losses on the trot. They're down to 12th now, but they have had a good start. Uh, they lost to Chelsea. Obviously, they lost to the absolutely uh, amazing Leicester City. Uh, they even lost to Burnley, which was um, a surprise. Um but you know, we we know they've got it in the locker because they, they they you know they've got the point at Liverpool. They've beaten Arsenal. How do you think this is going to go, uh, Steve? This one, I'm going to go for Norwich. Uh, reason being, I think they you know they spent more time lately in the Championship. Uh, the same with Brentford, hmm. and I think uh, that Brentford will struggle against Norwich because they kind of um, balance each other out. Uh, or they have done in the um, in the championship. So I think yes, they, they know how each other play, and um, I think Norwich will come out on top on this. I mean, I, agree. I I can see where you're coming from totally there, and um, you know, you wouldn't believe that Norwich were the team that won the championship last season, and and Brentford came up by the playoffs. Um, but say, hi, Yank, he's going for uh, United to win 3-2. No surprise there being a United fan. Uh, he's going Brentford 3-1. Um, it, it could go either way, this. I'm wondering if Brad is going to agree with you, Steve. We do know Brad does go for the uh, odd underdog game. What, what are you going for with this one, Brad? I can't believe you, Chris. I cannot believe you. Cannot be serious. Steve, <laughs> when I back Norwich to win, right, I got the absolute Mickey taken out of me. I had someone saying I was a fool for even thinking they could get a point, let alone a win. And Chris played the Mackin Row classic scene. You come on, Steve. I can tell you what, I can tell you who his favourites are already because he's there being <laughs> nice and complimentary to you. Hey, I can't upset the guest and the next player, can I? I've got to be nice to him. <laughs> I don't have to be nice to him, Brad. <laughs> No, but to be honest with you, Steve made some very good and compelling points. Um, but I just... Are they going to do a Burnley and finally get a win? I just... I don't know. I don't know how shell-shocked Brentford players are from that loss to, to Burnley. So that plays a big factor. This is their mentor. We said, didn't we, Chris, that they're going to have a difficult patch and it's how all about how Brentford respond. Um... And that Burnley defeat really has not changed my opinion on Brentford, but it's maybe for this is going to be the talent challenge in time and how long will it take Brentford to get back on track. My, um, my thing is Brentford are at home, so I'm going to stick to my guns and I'm going to go with my first original report and I'm going to go Brentford to win it. I'm going to back them to win. Right. So you're going for Brentford. Well, what can I say other than... I tell you, honestly, I will love it if we beat them. Love it. <laughs> I would love, in fairness, to see Norwich just get one win because I'm getting to the point with Norwich. And <laughs> I did a thing with, with, with Julian Watts the other night and I did say, just Norwich City, why? You know, why do they keep coming up and going straight back down again? I mean, you know, Steve, you look at them and you think, like, there's other teams in that division, like Brentford, that would come up and give it a good go. And, I mean, I know West Brom have been up and down for a couple of seasons, but, you know, they did have a run of six or seven seasons in the top flight. Are Norwich making the mockery of the Premier League? Um, I wouldn't say they're making a mockery. I think they're... They're stuck in the ways the head of the manager feels that they want to play. Mm. But um, the, it's, it's it's a hard one, to be honest. Uh, they haven't, I don't think he's got the money to spend on big names, and I don't think big names would want to go to Norwich. So he has to uh, really, you know, mm. handle the players that he's got. 
the system worked for him in the uh, in the championship, and he feels that he could do the same. But I think once they get the one win under the belt, they'll they'll like every other club. They'll have a little run where they get two or three good results, and then it'll peter out as the season goes along. Yeah, but you have to stick to your guns and do what you what you know what's right for your club. And at the you moment, do. I feel you know they're trying to do what's right for their club and. They're unfortunate. They were, you know, some of the games I have watched, they've been unlucky. Mm. You know, they've been in the games um, for quite a long time. But it's, it's just one of those things. And I, but I feel, you know, I think um, they know where Brentford play, Brentford know where they play. So I, I feel they'll, they'll be more relaxed in playing Brentford than they would any of the other teams because they, they've been used to playing them over the last couple of seasons. Yeah, I, 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 I do, I do agree. I mean, a bit of me wants Norwich to win, but that's more, more because I think that I want them to beat Derby's record of having the lowest points ever in the Premier League because I, I don't want Derby to lose that. Um, do we, Brad? We want Derby to keep that lowest. Uh, no, Dar- Derby ever. worked damn hard to get that 11 point trophy, they deserve <laughs> to keep it. Uh, Jeff's gone. For, he's, he's gone. For, he's, oh, he, he's had one of those moments. He's agreeing with you, Steve. Uh, Connor, uh, all the way from America. There, I, I never. I call him Yank one minute, Connor the next minute. I call him worse, obviously, to his face. But <laughs> it is Connor. Um, he's gone for three-one Brentford. I, I'm really again. I'm going to get splinters in my bottom because I'm going to sit on the fence with this one because it is one that Norwich should win, like you said. Steve, you know, they know Brentford, um, so they should be able to get some week from this. But Brentford, they are, you know, they, they, they are finding it hard. And they are. I think what Brentford are doing is they are realising against Chelsea and against us that if you don't take your chances in this division, you get punished for it. And, you know, you don't get the wins. But I think they've got a manager. Again, he's not... Spent you know much money. I don't, I don't you know he's he's got virtually the same squad he's come up with, but I think they'll learn from that. But Norwich are going to start scrapping it now, and I think they'll get they will get something from this game. But I think it is going to be a draw. I can see it probably ending up being being one of those nil nil last on match of the day uh, games here. But uh, I would say I've got splinters in my bottom again. I can't sort of decide between the two of them. Now, Chelsea against Burnley, almost top versus bottom, Steve. Chelsea, after they lost to Man City, they've just four wins in a row, sitting top of the pile, three points clear of Liverpool. They beat Southampton, they beat the aforementioned Brentford, uh, they beat um, Norwich 7-0, they're a bit of a goal fest there. And of course, Newcastle, eventually they got the win 3-0. But Burnley did get their first win last week um, over, again, the aforementioned Brentford. They get plenty of mentions today. But they are still sat in the bottom three, Brentford. Three points from uh, Burnley, sorry, three points from safety. Anything? Can you see anything other than a Chelsea win here? To be honest, I, I, like, I like Burnley. I like the way they mm. play. And I think that if Chelsea don't score early on, I think... Um, you know, they'll, they'll struggle to score towards the end. So, on this one, I feel that um, against all the odds, I think uh, Burnley's going to get a draw from this game. Right. Uh, I thought I thought you're going to be very very brave then and go for the Burnley win. I thought you were you were building us up to that. Um, well, I, I was I was just I was thinking of saying the win, but I think um, if they can stop Chelsea from scoring early on, and the longer mm-hmm. the game goes on, I think you, you're more likely to see. A draw there, but it could yeah. go the other way. Like if Burnley score early on, you might yes. uh, they, then you might, you know, they might get the win because they got something signed on too. But Chelsea at the moment are playing really, really well. But um, I think yeah. Burnley are a stubborn team, and they'll, Chelsea will have to work hard. Yeah. Good evening to Rich from Rich Sports. Uh, just in a bit late for the old Manchester United prediction. Um, yeah. Uh, one out of three you got there, uh, so, <laughs> Rich, being a Man United fan. You can thank Steve for your uh, one vote. Um, Jeff's gone 3-0 Chelsea. 
we do know Burnley, Brad, have got it in them to cause an upset, and we do know it, it, it's you know they are a team that do like to uh, put the cat among the pigeons. But you know, Chelsea seven nil against Norwich. They're, they're, I, can, I mean, I predicted them to win the whole thing this season. There's nothing yet shown me that they're not going to. What do you think? I totally agree with you, mate. Uh, I was making the statement that last year that I thought it give Chelsea and Tuchel time, um, they will challenge for the league title this season. And when they signed Lukaku, I, I saw them as, whilst everybody was going for Man U because of Ronaldo and Varane and Man City were going to do it again and Liverpool were going to be in tension. Not many people are actually saying Chelsea, probably because of a certain German forward that they've got. Um, yeah. But they were sort of my dark horses. I thought anybody had the chance and the mental power. I mean, they're showing form at the moment of Man City from last season. You know, that incredible unbeaten run that Man, Man City you know, went on that, 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 that literally yeah. propelled them from seventh or eighth all the way to about 10 points clear at the top. And they didn't look back and Chelsea just looked like a team that's just going to destroy everybody because they're just so relentless. I know it was late against Newcastle, but they got three goals once the floodgates opened. And I just think whilst I, I can see Steve's point, and I can agree with him that Burnley do have the capabilities to be for straight, for straight, um, Chelsea for a, for long periods of the time. I just can't see anything other than a Chelsea win, mate. I, I really can't. I can't even see a draw. I just think Chelsea are going to win this. How easy it is, I don't know, but they will win this game. Indeed. Um, let me just stick you in there, Brad. Um, on, give, give in to your Burnley, your Burnley soft side. Go on, go on mate. Go on. <laughs> yeah. I, I did. I did live there as, as I was often say. I lived there for twenty odd years. All my kids were born there, but um, I, I still. Uh, I don't like to see them go down, but I do like to see them suffer. <laughs> so, uh, Rich says hi, and Scott. Good evening. Welcome along, sir. How the devil are you? Thanks for joining us. Um, now, yeah, like I said, if it had been at Burnley. I think it would have probably been a different matter because, you know, and we know at, at home, Burnley can be a different team. But this is the season, unfortunately, when I do think that they are going to go down. Because um, I think I think Newcastle will get out of it because, obviously, of what they're going through at the moment. But I just don't know. Burnley... I, I, I like Sean Dyche, and I say I've got a little bit of a soft spot for them because of my association with it, but I can't see anything other than a Chelsea win here. I really, really can't. I've got to, unfortunately, got to agree with you again, Brad. I just what? think... <laughs> it works, it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I just... Uh... I'd like, yeah. I, I mean, like Steve said, they can, they can be difficult to beat, they can go out and get a surprise. We know that they've done it. You know, every season they've been in the in, in the division, but I just can't see anybody stopping Chelsea at the moment, um, which is a bit of a bit of a worry because we've got them the week after the international break. Um, uh, so, okay, I say Jeff went Chelsea three nil all the way. Scott is agreeing with Brad, and he thinks it'll be three nil or three one. Uh, and obviously, by definition, agreeing with myself as well. And don't worry, Steve, everybody disagrees with everybody in here. This is football. We mm -hmm. agrees. <laughs> we all come up with different... Funny old, uh, funny old game football. Uh, isn't it just? It has, it, that's the one thing that hasn't changed. That you can, the thing you can't predict is the predictions, because we just we're, we're, they're all over the place. Or They always have been, really. Um, Palace Wolf, Steve... Um, Palace surprised me, showing, showing everybody that I know nothing about football. My one thing is there was the Brentford thing. Everything else I predicted. Well, Chelsea, I suppose, are doing right. But I did think that Palace would struggle and possibly uh, be looking at a relegation battle. But they've got four draws and in, in the last five. And, of course, last time out, managed to, to beat Man City. Um, Wolves, another team I thought would struggle after... Um, getting rid of Nuno, but sat up there in seventh with four wins out of five uh, and, and a draw against Leeds. 
five wins for Wolves um, and two for Palace. Which way do you see this one, uh, Steve? Um, well, at the moment, I think Wolves are playing a lot better away from home than they are playing at playing at, uh, playing at home. Mm. Um, I think they've got a, a little momentum going now. So um, I fancy fancy Wolves to win this one one nil. So yeah, I, I can see where you're coming from with that. Uh, I can I don't know, <laughs> Brad. Who's the manager at Wolves? I can never remember. Um, his name's. It's spelt large. I don't know if it's ah, pronounced. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Would Nuno point two point oh is what he is. Yes, <laughs> and Nuno probably wishing he hadn't left now, but uh, but he did. Um, mutual consent. Patrick Vieira doing well at Palace. Is he going to get anything with the visit of Wolves, though, Brad? There's always a chance the way he's got Palace playing. It's something that not a lot of people would have said. I think a lot of people would have seen how other players be becoming managers has worked out, and by that I mean not very well for them, um, and would have ripped Vieira off before we had a chance uh, to, to do anything. Um, well, we all remember what happened when a certain Leicester manager got ripped off before the season was started, and look at how it turned out for the bookies um, mm. at 5,000 to 1. But this is an interesting game because both teams are actually in a bit of good form. Palace look really good when they're on when they're on song, and he's got them playing a way that they're keeping uh, everybody on song, and everybody seems to be wanting to put performance in Vieira. It probably helped him that he's he spent a bit a few more years in the back seat learning his job than some of these that jumped it after about six months putting the cones out. So I can't decide this one, so I'm going to get some splinters on me, bum, Chris, and I'm going to go straight down the middle and uh, say it's a draw. No! <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to catch you up. Um, ne next week, Steve, it's just going to be you and me. <laughs> and I'll <laughs> still be in the lead. <laughs> You're still be yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Rich has gone 2-1 to Palace. Um, Jeff has gone uh, Wolves to Shade it 1-0. Um, I'm really... I was considering the draw, but I think because you have, Brad, I am going to have to go one way or the other. Oh. Um, it's a long season, Chris. You can still pull it back at any point. Don't give in to your <laughs> ideas. It is but... a Palace do like the draws. Um, oh, Brad, why are you doing this to me? I'm just casting the line out, mate. I'm just casting the line out. You know what? Long... We played Palace recently and we saw how good they were. They, you know, they came back from 2 0 down and they totally outplayed us for all of the game because I know our goals were definitely um, uh, against the run of play. So they could have beaten us. They deserve to beat Arsenal. They only just sort of conceded that, that extra time, last minute goal. Um, they did struggle against Newcastle, which was a surprise. Um, they held Brighton. And of course, as I said, they have had that win over Man City. I'm going to go for a Palace win. Let's make it the full set there. I just think it's at home. Had it, had it been at Wolves, I might have edged towards Wolves. But as, it, as it's at Palace, I am going to go Palace. Um so it makes, makes it a nice full set. And our last Saturday game, uh, before we go to have a quick break, and it's on the BT Sport Saturday night game. Brighton are proving <laughs> Brad, Brad's favourite manager, maybe doesn't know what he's talking about in, uh, in Mr Potter, taking on Newcastle. Now, Newcastle have said, Steve, that they want their new manager in before Saturday. It isn't going to be Unai Emery. It could well be Eddie Howe. Um, and I think what, what I heard was that, um, uh, you know, it, it's maybe best not to be the next manager into Newcastle, but the one afterwards. It's like, it's like you know, you don't want to follow Martin O'Neill. You don't want to follow uh, Alex Ferguson. I'm, I'm a big fan you know, of Eddie Howe. Um, mm. And I think if uh, Eddie Howe, Gets in a few younger players. I think Newcastle will start to do really, really well. Um, at the moment, I can't see him scoring. 
Um, I can't see the style of play that they're trying to do. I think you've got the same scenario as Man United, but they're in the lower part where you've got 11 individuals and that's, mm. that's how they're playing at the moment. That's how it looks to me. So I think uh, Eddie has got a good work ethic. He's got a good um, track record in the lower divisions and mm. not so bad in the you know the top top one. So I think he'll go in there and shake things up and bring a bit of fresh air to the, to the team. I think he'll steady the ship, won't he? I think he'll go in and, you know, he kept Bournemouth up against all the odds for three or four seasons. So, you know, he, he wasn't a one-season wonder. In, in the in fact, the season that we won the Premier League, which is the season they came up, I think, you know, he was quite happy that we were getting all the headlines because it meant he went, you know, what he was achieving went under the radar and he, he kept them up quite easily, to be honest with you. But yeah, I, I think I don't think you'll I don't think you'll see him spending big, to be honest. No. You know, uh, I know the the richest club in the world now apparently and that, but yeah. I don't think he can um handle big big boys and I don't think he'd, he'd want to do that. I think he'd be like going for um, more team players so he can build his mm. team solid rather than just have like uh, top name mercenaries yes. to come yes. in and don't want to play the style of players that he plays because he, he likes his players to work. He does and he'll get them play. And like I say, I think he will stabilise them. He'll probably keep them up if it is him uh, and then maybe build I mean, it's not. I mean, managers these days, you probably go in there thinking, all right, give me a five year contract, sack me after two, and I'll walk away with enough money to, <laughs> to never have to work again. But uh, does this mean that you are going for the Newcastle win? Me? Yes. Um, not this week, because I think they're still in the, the same boat yeah. as they have been, you know, all season. Yes. And I think Brighton have um, started really well this year, so I'm going. I'm going for a Brighton win. For Brighton win, yeah. Oh, Brad, Mr. Potter, you love him. I'm getting so sick and tired of Brighton. Liverpool had one job this season. They don't care what they do for the rest of the season, but Brighton were in miserable form. They were showing the true colours. And all you had to do at 2 0 was hold on to Lee, but no, the Germans are the rescue. Oh, Steve, can I just say that Brad is not, not Graham Potter's biggest fan? <laughs> It's not even Graham Potter, it's all these people that come out and hype him up because he likes to go for high XG. And it's like you haven't got the players to do high XG. Oh, it just does medium. But the thing is, going back to the Newcastle thing quickly, you you know, you mentioned Eddie Howe. I actually don't think he's a good appointment. And the reason I say that is Newcastle are in dry, dire straits. They're not doing well at the moment. I agree with Steve. It looks like a bunch of individuals on the pitch. And unfortunately, them individuals, 90% of them are, are championship standard. You know, whoever comes in, I don't even think Jose Mourinho could get a tune out of the likes of Jeff Hendricks, John Joe Shelby and Joe Linton. It, that, 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 that's a task that's so impossible, not even Tom Cruise himself could do it. Um, <laughs> the thing is, as well, well is, yeah, I know. in January as well, he's got to spend money and his track record at spending money for the players he brought in, I'm just going to say one name for you and his price. 20 million Dominic Solanke. He was he, he baffled Bournemouth fans with his transfer policy, and in the end, that probably turned it around. So they actually went from a side that looked good in the Premiership and looked like they were going to settle in as a mid-table team to holding on to dear life every season. I don't think he's the right man for Newcastle. I don't think if they and if they take him, he won't last the season. I don't think I honestly don't think he will. Um they can't score a goal. They can't get any points. There's absolutely no way on earth that Manchester, that Newcastle United, get anything from this game. So I'm going to have to. I'm going to do a stick. No, I'm going to do a Steve Linex. I'm going to do a Steve Linex. I'm going to say Brighton and hope that Newcastle win. I ah, see. Thinking. <laughs> Cheers, Steve. You're, you're always a pal, mate. I've always, I've always <laughs> a pal. <laughs> Hey, it's all it's all about people are getting plans here. Steve's plan has always been 
uh, after last season to to go for the, when we do the prediction uh, league um, with the ex players. You always go, don't you, Steve, for for the other team uh, against Leicester, hoping that you'll get it wrong and Leicester will win. Um, that said, you did get a point against Arsenal. Um, Terry's going for a new system here, um, which is basically coin spinning. <laughs> Heads they win, tails they lose. Um, Jeff says uh, he's going for a Newcastle win, 2-1. Um, and Terry says, uh, if, after two, <laughs> if after two heads and two tails, then I'm going for a draw. That said, we still don't know what he's going for with this game, whether that's the draw or not. Um, I want to see Newcastle go down. And I think it would be so funny, in fairness, uh, they're the richest club in the world and they get relegated. That said, I do like the new owners that have come in uh, because they're not, you know, going to spend, spend, spend. You know, they are saying we know we're not going to win anything for two or three years, and then we're going to start building. So they've got the plan right. It's almost like a Leicester type of plan rather than a Man City type of plan. Um, but I do like the big clubs to struggle and the little clubs like Leicester, Brentford, Sheffield United, etc., to come up and and do well. I don't. I don't think Eddie Howe is the man for Newcastle. Not the fact that I don't think he will last there, and Newcastle will sack him. I don't think he will. I think he will resign because he did it at Burnley. He's a South Coast boy. He loves it down here. Bournemouth was his perfect. What he did at Bournemouth, he should be given the, the freedom of the city and the freedom of going to any shop he wants and buy whatever he wants. Because what he did at Bournemouth was nothing short of a miracle. Uh, so got total respect for the guy, but I do know he. He does like to be in and around the South Coast. But the law of the money uh, might, might might prove me wrong. If he goes to Newcastle, can he have an impact? Whoever goes into Newcastle, they want the new manager in by the weekend. But I think, it, you know, if he does, I think you go in, you watch this game, and then you take advantage of the, uh, the international break and have the two weeks to, to get your message across. Uh, this is a team that finished, um, um, well, they beat us, didn't they, at the back end of last season and finished 14th, although I think that obviously didn't really sum the season up. Oh, I, Brighton have been, Brighton have been on, uh, they've, they've got four draws in the last five, uh, losing to Man City. So whilst they're not losing it, they're not actually going out and setting the world alight. Watford... And Newcastle with the uh, with the draws that uh, that uh, sorry Watford and Crystal Palace are the draws that Newcastle got. I'm going to disagree with the pair of you here. Um, I can't see Newcastle win, but if they do get the new manager in, I think there might be that new manager bounce. They want to impress them. If Brighton had been on a better run, who knows? But like I say, they've been drawing games they should have been winning. So I'm going to get more splinters and I'm going to go for a draw again. And I think, I, having said that, I think I have got to give myself one of these, Brad. Be serious, man. You cannot be serious! <laughs> yeah, finally! I've got, finally. I've got to give myself one of those, but I, I just... With the new manager in, as I say, I think they might get that little bit of a bounce. Not enough to win, but enough to um, to get the draw. That's the Saturday games uh, and the Friday night games. We're going to go on to Sunday and we'll be back, as they like to say, straight after a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Hi, hi, all right, Chris. This is Neil Razor and Raddock here. No, no, you're huge. A Leicester City fan. You run the website, Facebook, the Twitter site, Leicester Till I Die. That's what you are, Chris. A Leicester Till I Die. I am Leicester Till I Die. Anyway, Chris, well done for doing all, all the hard work for Leicester City. All the best, son. Neil Razor Ruddock. Aye, aye, Chrissy. Aye, aye. A word from our sponsor, and that word is whiskey. Um, thanks, thanks, Neil. There, Enjoy, enjoying life to the full. Bless him. Um, Terry says we're putting uh, the kiss of death on this one. He's going for he's going for his banker with a Brighton win. Um, 
Scott says, can you imagine the uproar from Newcastle fans if Big Sam gets appointed? It might keep him up, though, although he didn't manage to do that um, uh, with, with West Brom last week. And Luca's coming. Good evening, Luca. A couple of score predictions for later on. Um, we're going to start on the Sunday uh, Sky game there. Oh, I hate Arsenal. <laughs> but an Arsenal win um, last week against Leicester. Totally, totally played us out of the ballpark in that first 45. And they just did what they had to do and kept us out in the second 45. But they're up to six. Uh, they haven't lost, well, they haven't lost in about seven, but in the fast five, five games, they've got three wins and two draws. Maybe the process is working for them, Steve. Do you see them getting anything out of a, a Claudio Ranieri Watford? Uh, to be fair, your next two fixtures, um, I'm cooling a go for the two teams because I cannot stand Arsenal. And I, cannot stand, <laughs> and I cannot stand Tottenham. So, for every reason which is personal, I'm going for Watford win because I want Watford to win badly. Can I, can I please I clip Arsenal, that and I use that Tottenham. as a... <laughs> Steve, I love it. Can I please clip that out later and use that as a jingle? I'm going... <laughs> I hate Arsenal. I hate Tottenham. You can do that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing if not honest. And I suppose it's as good a reason as any uh, for going against, the, going against poor Arsenal. Uh, so you're going to go for the Watford win. Um, oh, wrong one in there, Steve. There we go. <laughs> the Watford win. Um, Brad, follow that. <laughs> Well, I, I admire Steve's passion towards his hatred of Arsenal. I'm not uh, not the fondest of them right about now. The, you know, no Arteta's at the wheel, no Arteta out. So well, probably still some people out there, but if your team's doing well, you shouldn't still be against your manager, no matter what you think of him. But um, that's why I'm glad I don't support them, because I couldn't deal with the fan base. But I've already been scolded twice by Watford. So... Unfortunately, I can only see one outcome, and that is Arsenal at home continuing their record by getting all three points against Arsenal, um, by against Watford. They're playing themselves. They're going to beat themselves, Arsenal, and beat Watford at the same time. <laughs> no, we're doing well. We're beating 22 players there. Um, so you go for the Arsenal win. It hurts me. It hurts me to think about going for an Arsenal win, and... And with all due respect, I mean, you were, you were on an Arsenal channel on Monday night. Were they, were they gloating? No, no. Yes. They were actually still very negative um, in the sense that, yes, they are happy, obviously, with the results first and foremost. But um, mm. it, it's the way they're going about it. I mean, you know, they, 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 were, they found themselves in cruise control against... Tottenham, and yet in the second half it was all Tottenham. Uh, same was said about the Villa game, and same was said about our game. They got themselves into two 0 and it feels like this form is not a turn of the corner for Arsenal fans. But a lot of Arsenal fans feel like this is the um, calm before the storm, in, in in a sense that he's going desperado. See how many goals we can get in the first half hour. Hi, Maisie, uh, and. Um, and then hopefully see the result out. Um, yeah. But I don't know how long it continues. Knowing the channel you were on, I can believe that it was still very much anti Arteta. Um, yeah, I don't want to say anything about that channel, mate. Um, so yeah, and anti Arteta and Uncle Fester. Um, yeah, something politely. So yeah, Maisie. Good evening. How the devil are you? Uh, Hello, Maisie. Um, hope you hope you are well. Um, she's going for a draw. Um, go for an Arsenal win is Terry, but hope, hope, hope Arsenal get thrashed. I, I can't go for... But people say to me, sort of, you know, why, you know, do you feel the way you do about Arsenal and Tottenham? And, you know, Steve will know, you know, our, our main rivals from, from and most big fans are like Coventry, Derby, Forest, but... Tottenham became, I think, a bit of a banter team for us during the the the, the win, uh, the Premier League win when they came third in a two horse race, um, and then Arsenal, for me, 
a little bit that season with you know with the beaters and they thought they'd won the league. But I think to me it was their attitude about James Madison is not the fact that they might they might get him because every player has his price, but the fact that you know it was we're Arsenal and of course he wants to come here. Um, so that I don't, that's why I don't like Arsenal. Um, oh, I can't go for an Arsenal win because it would hurt me too much. So I've got to go for the draw again. I'm afraid I'm going for. There's going to be a lot of draws in my uh, in my world this weekend. You know, <laughs> uh, Maisie says she hopes that Arsenal get thrashed as well. Of course you do, Maisie. You're a Man United fan. I wouldn't expect any less of you. Steve, I don't need to ask you, Steve, for this one, do I? Can I just can I just put you down for an Everton win? Yes, please. I'll desperately <laughs> see Kane, Dyer, Son in the championship. I so really want them to struggle. Um, it's just the cockiness of the, the club and the way they've treated the last manager and that. No, mate. I, I yeah. hate them with the vengeance. Kane's one of those players where you want to you want to slap his face, but when he plays for England, I still want him to do well. So I know what you mean, but no other club could actually claim that they've done really, really well to get a manager that turned them down um, three or four months ago, uh, having to pay five million to get rid of what was their eighth or ninth choice manager to now get him in. Cop the actual uh, appointment up, announcement up, and announce it before it had happened, and then actually announce it in Spanish for something it was for some reason. Um, I just, again, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Tottenham are one of those clubs. You, you, unfortunately, you'd love them to suffer, but I, I say, unfortunately, I think they have got the right manager in now. Um, I really, really do. Uh, and Rafa is struggling. At Everton, I thought you'd be doing better, to be honest with you. Um, that said, the tenth, but he's got a good squad there. Rafa, he's gone in um, now that we've had the die down of you know maybe Demari Gray is not as good as he thinks he's. Um, or, uh, I mean, they beat they beat Norwich, Everton. They drew with Man United, but they lost to West Ham. They lost, I mean, heavily to Watford, although it was at the end. Uh, or the, and the loss to Wolves. I've got to go with this one. I'm, I've got to go for a Tottenham win. As much as I do hate them, I probably don't hate them quite as much as I do Arsenal. And I want to see them struggle. But I just think having got Conte in his first game, he's just gonna he's gonna go in there and kick off. I don't know about you, Brad, and I can't wait to see the first time that uh, Daniel Levy says no to him. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one because he'll walk straight out the door, mate. Um, I said earlier, Conte must feel a little bit smugness towards um, Levy because he had him over a table in, in layman's terms for for his contract and the promises he must have had to make him after refusing him the first time round. But I'm... Chris, you're going to hate me. Um, well, more than I do. Yeah, more than you do, yeah. More than you already do, but you are going to hate me, and that's because it's not just because Conte's coming in and he's made an effect. When you go through so many managers in approaching and getting denied, you probably find that even the players that see it on Sky Sports, and I know they say they don't try and listen to it, but you can't help it as a player that when a certain manager's name gets mentioned and it starts really racking up heat like Conte's was when they first originally approached him. It, you know, you get a bit meerkat, you don't know as a player, you're like, oh, my mind him coming in. Yeah, I'd really get up for, for, for that manager. I'd really, really think he'd come in and I want to show him what I'm capable of, sort of thing. Which I think was a bit harsh on Nuno because once everybody, the worst kept secret was he was never really their choice. I think you find yourself hard to motivate you as a player. And I think they maybe already got ahead of themselves when they heard that Conte was apparently coming in the first time, that the players were probably already thinking of him as their ne next manager. And now that he's here, I just see Kane running riot, I'm afraid. I, do, mm. I just do. I see him running riot. It's all going a bit Pete Tong for Everton. And, and unfortunately, Chris, for you, I have to agree with you. I'm going to go for a Tottenham win. 
Oh, did I take you in the draw there? Oh, I do apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, it is a very good point you make there. And, and just going back uh, to, to Steve, yeah, talking about Eddie Howe and going to Newcastle, you know you're not the first choice as a manager. And Eddie Howe, if he does go in or whoever goes in, knows that they're not first choice because, you know, um, uh, Unai Emery was. I think it's how you embrace it when you do go in. Um, yeah. I think if, like, say, going back to Eddie Howe, if he does go in and goes well, you know, he'll be the bee's knees. Um, I think it's all down to the players you've got. And, you know, my, my hatred at the time is, it, is the way they... You could see it was like um, they just didn't want to play for the manager. Yeah. And, um, and I think Newcastle fans, whoever goes in, will be <laughs> brilliant, just pleased that they're not getting Steve Bruce back. <laughs> I think the Newcastle fans, if they see the team putting in 100%, hmm. like uh, the Keegan days, win, lose yeah. or draw, they'll be really happy. Yes. And um, the only thing that they've been mad about is that the team hasn't given 100%. Uh, they're not going on the pitch for the club. Yeah, I think that's that true. happens, to, you know, same with Tottenham, whatever, to get rid of, rid of their manager. So, they're big clubs with a big following. And I think if they get the, you know, the team performing. Mm. Who, um, I think I saw know, a banner once that said, you know, we held up by Newcastle fans. So, it's something along the lines of we don't necessarily want a team that wins. We just want a team that tries. You know? But you go back, you go back to Chelsea. Chelsea were the same, you know. They didn't put 100% in when they weren't happy with their manager. Now they've got a happy uh, environment with the manager they've got. You see everybody now, their game has written, uh, risen 100%. That's yeah. why Chelsea are performing week in, week out, because every player wants to play. Yeah. And uh, you can see it in the, you can see it in the Chelsea uh, dressing room. Mm. So it has got a lot to do with that. And I think the managers have to, excuse the language, you know, get a set of balls and set the rules that straight for everybody yeah. and um, treat them all the same and get the team working, working 100% dying for the club. It will be, like I say, an interesting few weeks for a lot of these teams now. I love this, Scott. Sorry, Chris, must disagree with you. Kane is one of them faces that needs a slap whoever he's playing for. <laughs> Can I just say that other faces are available? <laughs> you don't, um... <laughs> At your local slap a face store. <laughs> Yes, um, <laughs> uh, Scott's went uh, 2-1, uh, Jeff's gone 0-0. The big game of the weekend, and I don't know why we, we even talk about any other game, uh, Leicester in entertaining leads, um, or not entertaining leads, Leicester going up the M1 and uh, facing leads. Um, thought we'd turn the table, Leicester, after a very, very, I'm not going to put it any other way, poor start. Drawing against teams we should have beaten, only just beating teams like Norwich that we, we, we should have wiped the floor with last well, we would have done last season. Um, we got an amazing win over um, Man United. We we outplayed Brentford and, and soaked the pressure up and hit them on the break. Uh, you know, after draws against Burnley, uh, well, say, say Burnley, as, a new, as the new name was after that game, Burnley VAR. It was a draw against Palace, and we were lucky with that. Like I say, we've got the Man United win, the Brentford win, and a loss to some Southern London team. I don't know. Leeds struggle. It's second season syndrome for them, uh, Steve. Leeds, it's, 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 a lot of these teams seem to come up and struggle in the second season, unlike Leicester, of course, who went on to win the Premier League in the second season. Just thought I'd mention that, Brad. Um Lead mixed form, lost to West Ham, beat Watford, lost to Southampton, drew with Wolves, but they beat Norwich last time out. And let's be honest with you, you can't read anything into any team beating Norwich, can you? Can you see a Leicester getting back on track and getting a win? It is away. I think this is a tough place to go. Um, I mm. think, you know, um, even, in, even in my playing time, you know, um, the hostility is not different from one stand. It's from four stands, and I think um, this one doesn't go down to where Leeds are playing. I think it's it's which Leicester team turns up on the day. Definitely, I think, uh, if Leicester go there with the the frame of mind that they've got to work the you know 
work your work the pitch, uh, put the effort in, um, they'll come out on top. But if they go there with these sideways passing, back way passing, and not end at leads, I think they struggle. So on this one, you know, I think this one's going to be a draw. Oh wow! Okay, um, just put you in there. Like you say, it is very, very much which lets the team turn up. And uh, yeah, Steve, explain this to me: how a team that can go out and play so well one week, the, and I know it's a case of who you're up against and who you're playing, but not necessarily a win followed by a win, but just. How can a team put in an amazing performance, look like Brazil one week, and then, no disrespect to Brad, look like North Macedonia the next week? <laughs> I think that's down to um, Brendan Rodgers being too uh, cautious and trying to change his tactics to suit certain mm-hmm. teams. I feel that um, every time he does that, he weakens Leicester. Um, because the players need to get into a routine, they need to get into a style of play, they need to get, you know, um, a rhythm going. And I think with the changes and the, the tactic changes, I think that's where it takes the edge off Leicester. Yeah. And um, they don't seem to be the threat they were. Um, the Leicester I like seeing is the one like where they all turn up on the day, everything's crisp and pass and move, and then they're, they're looking to go forward. Uh, that's a Leicester I like. Um, I don't like the Leicester when they're playing the sideways, 20 passes at the back, and then proofing the ball up when vardy has got no chance. Um, so, Leeds are compact. Uh, they're good at you know, what they do. They work the pitch all over. So, I think Leicester mm-hmm. have to match that. And they shouldn't sit back. They should go for it. But it does make a good entertaining game, and I think it'll be a draw. I think it is going to be an entertaining game. I mean, last season, Brad, uh, a 4-1 win to Leicester and a 3-1 win to Leeds. So we're going to see goals. And whenever I do predict the score, whenever and I'm doing it with with, uh, with the ex, um, ex-player um, league, I could never go for a nil for Leicester because I know we'll always concede at least one goal. <laughs> With, uh, yeah, yeah. Right, right there he got his players the pizza, as I said on the. Uh, and if you go onto the BBC website, and it's well worth checking out, mainly because 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 I'm on it basically, and just as a reminder. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. I just had to remind people. BBC website. Go on to the Leicester City homepage on the BBC, and every Tuesday there's a Tuesday talking point, which is me. Um, I know they're desperate. The BBC. Um, unfortunately, I'm not on Gary Lineker's wage, but <laughs> I do go. And, and and the the point I was making this week was, you know, if Ranieri got everybody a pizza, Brendan Rodgers is going to go out and get him a three course meal, hasn't he? He's got to do something offensive um, work or lack of it at times, um, should I say. Uh, The big bonus is it really does sound like um, James Justin is ready and available. Probably not for Moscow and Mm. he might feature against Leeds. Um, I think he might get 60 minutes against Leeds if that is the case. I can't see him coming back and straight away being able to do 90 minutes. I, I don't, no. you know, not even the most. Brendan would allow team. it, to be honest with you. No, the way it's not. Brendan brings players back. Yeah, it's also not in. Yeah, I was just about to say it's also not in his um, forte to, to do mm. that, to rush a player back. We've seen what that does before. Um, I think. Um, tomorrow night's result is very important to how or what Leicester turn up for this game. I, 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 we did the post-match and I spoke about a lot of the positives that came after being found 2-0 down and won in the game against Arsenal was that at least we showed that the fight hadn't gone out of us and the heads hadn't dropped and all of a sudden all that hard work and good form was going to evaporate. Um, because they did, there was a lot of positives in the end of that game. At the end of the game, uh, Ramsey channeled in his inner David Seaman with the saves he was making um, on that game. And on another day, we actually might have turned that result on its head. 
Um, so if they get through tomorrow night's game and potentially put themselves top of that Europa League group, I think Leicester will get through this. I just I think they really are suffering with second season syndrome leads. I, I think if we get the right result, we will roll leads over in this. So I am backing our boys to get the three points. Fair point. Um, I, yeah, I, I, we haven't got a settled back four. We know that is a problem, uh, but we didn't have a settled back four last season. In fact, we had a work. We were in a worse position last season. Uh, James Justin's going to come back in, and even when he gets playing ninety minutes, how good is he going to be? You know, we've seen Madison come back. You know. And Piero, when he yeah, came back, yeah. you know, they're not the same players. And this is the thing that worries me. It's going to take him, you know, two or three games minimum when he's playing full, you know, when he's playing the full 90 minutes to get back up to the form that we have in our minds of the fact that he's, you know, he's going to come back and solve all our problems. Same with Wesley Fafana, as good as they are, when they're back and playing 90 minutes, they're not good, you know, they're this, they're not going to be the same player for quite a few games. Steve made the excellent point about Brendan changing tactics. And I mean, the last time I can remember another manager at Leicester changing tactics on a regular basis was a certain Nigel Pearson in our first season up. And it wasn't until towards the end of the season when he started picking the same, you know, the same team regularly that, of course, the great escape. And you know, if you look at the season before when we got promoted, you could tell six weeks in advance, you could take six weeks in advance what, um, you know, Leicester team that Nigel was going to pick. And, yeah. and you saw how good a season we had. That said, Leeds are, they are a second, second season syndrome. And I'm really, really surprised at them. I thought they'd do better than this. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they do struggle and they are in a relegation battle, what their attitude towards Bielsa will be. It's interesting to say, you know, that he's, he's been there quite a few seasons now, still doesn't appear to be attempting to speak English. Um, so maybe this is the normal leads now because obviously you always get that boost the first season back up. There are going to be goals, um, but. I've got, I've got, I think I think it will go in the favour of Leicester. I really I really do, and it pains me to to agree with Brad. Um, then <laughs> we have a love hate relationship, Brad and me. We love ourselves, hate each other. But no, I'm going to have to go for the Leicester win. Now then, Steve, last game, interesting game because uh, you've got Liverpool who are pushing uh, Chelsea all the way and have just won in Europe two 0 not lost in the last five. Uh, but Brentford did take them all the way with a 3-3. They got the draw with Man City, um, they, but they could only draw with Brighton last time out. But we do know, you know, <laughs> over two games in aggregate, 10-0. Uh, Maisie, if you're watching, sorry, but they absolutely annihilated Man United. And they did the same with Watford. Where West Ham, I, again, I thought they struggled this season, showing I know nothing about football, but... They're doing really well. Um, top of the group in, in the Europa League. Uh, one loss in the last five, which was that loss to Brentford. They beat Leeds. They beat Everton, uh, Tottenham. That's not hard at the moment. And, of course, they put four, four past Villa uh, the other night. I'm, I'm loving you know? West Ham at the moment. Mm. Um, they're I almost doing a Leicester, aren't they? I think they're a, a bit of... Fresh air this year, West Ham. Uh, mm. uh, really, really impress them. And, you know, you can never bet against Liverpool. But um, purely on this basis, I just want West Ham to win because of the way they're playing. They're having a good season and I think um, it'll make the league more interesting if they do beat them. And, mm. uh, you know, what you don't want to see after so many short games is that the top three or four teams are going to stroll away from the rest. So I think um, West Ham are doing what Leicester did. Uh, they're having yeah. a good season. And I, you know, I think at the role run at the moment, you know, I, I really fancy them. I agree. Uh, I'm going to say first here, so hopefully Brad will d disagree with me here. Um, but I like to see West Ham doing well. Looking against them at all, got a good fan base. 
they don't like their owners, um, which is surprising because the last couple of seasons they seem to be getting it right, but they might they might be up for sale. I thought the top four was nailed on at the start of the season. Uh, I think now that's down to a top three with you know Man United, who knows what. Um, depends whether uh, Oli has any you know advanced driving lessons at all. Um, I, I am pleased West Ham are doing what they're doing, and I think it's going to be a draw. To be honest with you, I think it's at West Ham, and I think uh, uh, Liverpool. They do they do seem to struggle occasionally, and that they've maybe drawn games that they should have won. But for me, it's a draw. Now then, Brad, you're going to hate me again, Chris. Because no, I, I, I can mute you. Hang on, let me just let me just mute you. Right, carry on, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Brad, did you say you were going for a Liverpool win? Right, let me just put you in here, Brad. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, Liverpool really, and I don't know if you could tell. I was, I don't, I don't think I let it on too much. Really, Liverpool really let me down. Person, on a personal level, I was hurt by Liverpool's performance. Um, but all joking aside, I, I, I West Ham were a good side. I, I, you know, I can see why a lot of people are backing them to be up there with Leicester in, in an escapade to break up that big six, as they call it. Mm. Um, and I just can't look past West Ham not getting something from this game, especially being at home. So I'm going to go and get splinters in my bum and uh, sit on the fence <laughs> and, and unfortunately join you with the draw, mate. For you, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, even my daughter says no one could ever hate Brad. Heather... Believe you me. <laughs> yes, yeah. good. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> you don't know him, Heather. You don't know him. Going to sit in there for a draw. And then she's off. She was here for a bit and then she's off. Thanks for popping in, Heather. That's kids for you, isn't it? Uh, yeah. thanks, Heather, take care. Love you. Right. Thank you very much, guys. So there we are, full set of predictions. Let us see how we go. As I'm not, I'm not hoping that Steve does as badly as he does in this other prediction game, but uh, it would help me out. But Steve, I just want to say, let's just get rid of this for a second and bring everybody in. Um, Steve, thanks so much for joining us. There isn't a show next week because it's international break. Damn thing, that'll be boring for a week. But hopefully, see you in two weeks' time. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. It's been uh, great having you on. Have you on, Steve? Thank uh, you. I, I like the fact that you seem to have gone. I don't know if it's me for the, the Brad Jesus look with the light shining down on you there. You look like you. Uh, I tell you what, I've, to... I've been banished. I've been banished to the bathroom because <laughs> uh, the daughter's got a couple of friends round, and I've just come in from work and I'm dirty. So Jane said, "Can't go in the house till I get tired and clean." So I've been hiding away in the bathroom for the last hour. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> <laughs> thank God we can only see this from the, the chest upwards. <laughs> yeah. you can't see what I've gone on below, see. No, this is it. I, I dread to think if you're in the bathroom. But at least you've not been banished outside the house to your van, to your camper. I was going to go in the motor, but it was too dark. So, yeah. Uh, that's why I'm in the bathroom. Yeah, that thought's going to be with me all night now, Steve. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Thanks so much for coming on. It's great to have you back, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, mate. Thanks very much. See ya. Uh, well. Cheers, Take Steve. Care, Steve. Cheers. cheers. Oh, Steve Lyon is there. Great guy, even if he... <laughs> so did he, he did say toilet, didn't he? He did. He said bathroom, mate. Yeah, he did. Yeah, well, bathroom, yes. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> so, oh, God. I need to get this thought out of my head. Okay, coming up tomorrow night again with Brad. What's this? It's going to be a late one. Get your cocoa and your slippers on, eh, Brad? Yeah, I might fall. I might be asleep doing it. I might do it in sleep talking mode. Of how late it's going to be, mate? I tell you what, we've got we've had Steve in the bathroom today. I don't want you in in, in your bed when you're doing it. You know? Oh no, I won't go that far, mate. Don't worry about that. 
Terry says, uh-huh. hey, I hope I read this. Let me just, all oh, right, sorry. I, I think I did misread that. We wondered where Steve was sitting. Sorry, sitting. That's it. Ah. <laughs> Brad, mate, as always, hope you feel better tomorrow. Yeah, I'm hoping so, mate. Yeah. I'm hoping if so. You don't, and you don't feel up for the post matches, it is quite a late one. Let me know. Obviously, totally understand. Um, won't yeah, I will let you know, more. mate. Yeah. But thanks very much and uh, take care, mate. Go off and have uh, have a suck on a fisherman's friend. I don't know about that, but I'll, I'll take care, mate. Thanks very much. <laughs> thanks everybody for joining. Hey, I, I can send you a nice a nice fisherman if you want. <laughs> uh, that's for that's for someone else, mate. That's for someone else. <laughs> and that's for a different show at a different time. Um, five minute preview at midnight. Brad, take care, mate. Look after yourself. And you, mate. See you later. Bye. 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 Thanks a lot, Jeff. Jeff is off to take the dogs out in the Philippines. Hope, um, hope it's nice weather for you down there. I'm presuming it, it might be. So let's just have a look at this, shall we? And let's just bring this back in. Um, and we'll have a look here at the results um, that have been chosen. Let me just see if I can get that a bit bigger. I'm not sure if. Ah, there we go. There we go. I'm just a shrinking violet, you know. Yeah, you believe that, don't you? So, um, Southampton Villa, Friday night on Sky. A couple of us went for a uh, Southampton win between them and Villa. I went for the draw. Basically, if you're thinking about taking your bets down to the bookies and you're making a note of these, just go for anything other than I said, and you could win a fortune. Man United, Man City, it's the... Big derby. Um, Steve seemed to think that Man United will come home. They seem to come home for this one. They do seem to like this one. But I just don't know where Man United are going. And Varane is out for a long time. So the Saturday morning uh, or Saturday early kickoff on Sky, it's going to be exciting. We're going to watch it. But it's I, I can see a Man City win. We, none of us could agree on Brentford or Norwich. Um, and God, I must have gone mad because I've gone for a Norwich draw. Brad leaving his Norwich this week and he's gone off and supported Brentford. Chelsea Burnley, none of us think Burnley are going to get anything out of that one. Sorry, Dan, if you're watching. Uh, Palace Wolves again and a split up straight across the middle there with us all going for either a win, the win at home, the draw, or the away win. Uh, Newcastle are going to get nothing at Brighton, even if they've got Eddie Howe or a new manager in. Uh, Arsenal and Watford, again, we're split up straight down the middle there. Um, Steve Steve just doesn't like Arsenal. He hates Arsenal enough and he just wants them to lose, as he does with Tottenham Hotspur as well. And to be honest with you, Steve, it's as good a reason as any. If there's two clubs you've got to hate, why not them two? Uh, I, know, I almost know how you feel. Um, nobody thinks Leeds will get anything when they host the mighty Leicester City. Uh Steve thinks it could be a draw, though. Uh, Brad and me, I know that, I know we're going to let goals in. I know we're not going to keep a clean sheet, but I, I've got to I've got to go with my team. And then um, Liverpool surprisingly getting nothing at West Ham. Now that is going to be the shock on the late kickoff on the Sunday on Sky Sports. Nobody going for any points for Liverpool. Steve thinks it'll be a West Ham. Me and Brad going for the draw. That's going to be, that's really, really interesting. Uh, but there we go. That's what it is. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, if you want to watch this back, please get over to YouTube. You Lester Till I Die TV. That's Lester Till I Die TV. For me and my mate, Terry the Troll here, uh, we're going to be all over the place. Um, and I'm very jealous, Jeff, because you're saying it's really warm and the sun is shining down there. Not impressed at all. Not impressed at all. Um, but thanks to everybody who joined in. Terry, Jeff there, even my daughter, Heather. Um, Scott was in earlier. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Thank you very much. Uh, Maisie, Richard, um, Luca, uh, all, all, all welcome. All thanks for joining in and playing along. 10.30 tomorrow. We said it. Jeff, uh, sorry, Jeff. Um, <laughs> Craig and myself. It's a must-win game tomorrow because if we lose tomorrow, it's coming home. And that is the Leicester City squad. About 10.30 tomorrow night, depending how the game goes, we will see you then for the post-match show. 
thanks very much for joining us for this one remember if you want to listen to us rather than watch us all the details are coming up but we're on your favorite podcast platform spotify apple itunes and um google podcast addict and the rest good night see you tomorrow night for the post-match show hello matt elliott here be sure to watch Leicester Till I Die TV on YouTube and follow all their social media platforms for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Till I die. Subscribe, like, follow, and join in now.